All right, now that we're sitting on the machine connected to the NeuroMaker, uh, I'll show you how to get to the file we just created. Now, I would love if uh, somebody created a script to do this automatically, but since I don't know enough um, about Linux, I'm not the one to do it. So we're going to have to connect to our Windows share every time the machine boots. Uh, but it's simple as opening any file browser. Go into uh, File, Connect to Server, selecting Windows Share, and it's called Epilog. And that's it. Connect. Easy enough. Epic U is our shared folder. I'm going to type C Jackson is my folder. And we've got a bunch of files. Um, one other hiccup is that Koopa Fab Mill, our Linux CNC program, um, can't open files directly from a sh network drive, so we have to drag things to the desktop first. So we look up tutorial.nc, tutorial.nc, drag to the desktop, and now we're ready to go. So launch Koopa Fab Mill. Oh, it's already open. Well, okay. Restart. All right, and now you can power the machine up and open. Go to our desktop, and it's looking for ngc. Anyway, we're going to tell it to look for all files, and that now we can see tutorial.nc. Okay, and there it is. So that is a preview of our path, the path that our tool is going to follow. Um, now, to set the machine up, um, what I like to do is hit the e-stop so we can move it around, put it in place, and um, for practicing purposes, uh, we've got a nice little uh, drop-in marker that we can use so we don't need to mess around with a router on our first go-around. So, unscrew those. This lifts right out, but uh, something I'll point out is it's got these little um, nubs on each side. So it has to be aligned this way with switches facing towards you um, so that you can pull these out. I'll kind of wiggle it a little bit. Uh, pulls out. Okay, set that down. Um, so we have this contraption which is just a brush pen screwed into this doohickey. Now we can drop that in sideways. And drop it all the way down. Screw it in. Okay, and now we have a harmless marker to uh, practice with. Okay, so. Let me get something we can draw on. Why not? Um, now, when we drill, we're going to want to tape this down. But since I'm not using anything but a marker, it doesn't matter so much. So, the first step is um, to position the marker in a suitable starting place. So, uh, and that involves being aware of how big your file is, and if you sit down here, uh, it'll tell you eight inches long ways. Um, so this is always with a, a left-hand coordinate system, so X and Y. Um, so along our X axis, it's 0.6 inches wide this way, and along the Y axis, long ways, um, here's marked Y axis, so long ways is eight inches. So we want to find a ruler and make sure that this, well, we got inch here, inches here, so we can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight inches this way, easy. But uh, get this into position, okay? And um, all right, so we just put that in a good starting position in X and Y, and we can move it down to a good starting point with our manual control. So we engage toggle machine power. And now we can uh, control the z-axis, move up and down. So I'm looking underneath here. Oh, we can speed up the jog. Wait for that marker to touch that. Okay, so earlier we entered the stock surface as zero, 
So basically we want to lower the bit or you know our tool, whatever it is we're using, down to the very surface until it's just above the surface. Okay. So it's just above the surface. Um, now we got it in the, pl the tools where we want to start it. Now we need to tell the software that we're at zero, zero, zero on each axis. So we select each axis, X axis, and we say it's home. And it says, okay, we're homed. Y axis, home axis, okay, we're home. Now Z is the only one we adjusted through the software, so it, I moved it an inch and a half down, but now I'm saying that that's actually zero. So now it thinks, okay, sure, that's zero from now on. Okay, so the machine knows we're at home. It's where we want it to start. Um, so we can now um, hit play, if I remember right. So real quick, I'll show you. When we hit play, the first step it does, and this is something that uh, the MakerCam software decides to do, is uh, it moves up by whatever the safety height is, in this case, 0.2 inches, and waits for you to hit continue before it starts the file. And this is useful because um, this gives us a, an opportunity to say, okay, it started. As soon as I hit enter, it'll do its thing. Uh, and that gives us a good opportunity to close all of our safety glass. If I didn't have a bunch of cords running in and out of here, close all of our safety glass. Well, plexiglass, but it helps. Um, and then we, if this was a router, we would turn the router on and close it up so nothing flies out. And then we can hit enter and it would start to do its thing. Anyway, this isn't dangerous, so I'll open this up. Oh, and one thing I'll point out is I'm actually limiting its feed rate right now. Um, it's moving a little slow. This might be a good speed for it, but um, if you wanted it to go a little bit faster, basically the file says to go 60 inches a minute, but we have an option down here, um, jog speed, that controls how quickly it moves. So if I wanted it to move a little bit faster, I could go up to 60 inches a minute, and it might be kind of hard to tell, but it'll be, it's moving a little bit faster now. So that's that can come in handy if, um, if you feel like it's moving a little too quick, like you can kind of hear some noises that don't sound great, uh, you can just, without stopping the file, you can just slow down the feed rate to, to move the tool a little bit slower. Okay, so one thing I'll point out that's already obvious on this L, and we can look at the graphic. So even though we told it to take these nice, sharp, 90 degree angles. Um, we can see from this preview it's giving us that it's not visiting each corner, it's actually turning these curvy, um, which can be very undesirable. Um, you know, if the pattern you wanted is these 90 degree angles, but it's turning these into very large curves, um, it's not a satisfactory result. So. What we figured out, um, a few of uh, my friends here at Fab Lab, is that it is trying its very hardest to keep a constant speed. Now if I slow this down, it's not going to have to take such drastic curves to, um, to visit every point. So it's not taking kind of these small curves. But the point is it's trying to visit every point along this path, but it's also trying to stay moving at whatever speed you try to move it at. Um, so you can either slow it down so it gets a little bit closer to those corners, or where's my note here? There's a line of G code you can add. G61. So this is um, a command you can add to the top of your G-code file, and I'll do another video to show how to do that. And basically it tells the machine to visit every point along the path. And um, so I'll show you a workaround if you're experiencing this problem. It's, it's essentially a trade-off between getting the exact path you told it to visit and the machine uh, keeping it up at a constant speed. Um, especially for complex shapes, 
If you tell it to visit every point along a path, um, it has to accelerate and decelerate to each point. So it's going to take a lot longer if it's trying to um, if it's trying to visit every point. So it can it can really add up your cut time if you tell it G61 without it being necessary. But that's that's up to you. All right, let's see how it's doing. So yeah, we can see that it was um, doing some unnecessary curviness, but that adds a certain style to it. We'll let it finish up. Uh, so it's that max velocity is the one you want to change if you want it to uh, slow down on you. And yeah, so if you have a drill, um, definitely do not stick your head this close. <laughs> but um, we just have a marker, so I encourage you to get to know the machine uh, while you're playing around with a marker. It's, I mean, it's fun to watch it go. Almost done, and we can see our result. Um, anything else I can tell you? I mean, oh. I'll show you our drawer of bits, wrenches. This should be a little bit more organized, but um, yeah, next video we'll put on an actual router bit and um, learn a couple more safety tips. But for now, as soon as it finishes this in here, it'll get up out of the way. And it's done. I hit the e-stop, cut off power so I can move it out of the way. And grab the piece. And there we have it. Easy as that. So that's a, a really good first project is just putting your name out in Inkscape and um, writing it on something, making a robot write it for you. Okay. So that's all for now.